Roughly three months ago, Refuse Fascism called on fellow anarchists impersonating protesters to meet outside of Washington, D.C.'s Lafayette Park. They were outraged that President Trump would show defiance against the siege of the White House at the end of May that resulted in more than 60 U.S. Secret Service Uniform Division officers and the torching of the historic St. John's Episcopal Church. Refuse fascism had come to celebrate that they have gradually become an agitating tentacle of the Democratic Party. Think about what it's going to cost to conduct Occupy-type protests all across the country, and especially in Washington, D.C. And let the people who are anguishing right now about a Trump-Pence administration, let all those who are seething with anger and rage, who are starting to organize and think about life under a fascist regime, know that they are not alone and that there actually is a plan and a way to stop this. In the studio, we have some good Americans, Carl Diggs, co-initiator of Refuse Fascism, representative of the Revolutionary Communist Party. How are you, sir? I'm doing good, Rashad. Because when I heard Black Voices for Trump, <laughs> right, yeah. it reminded me of something. This is like having Jews for Adolf Hitler back in Nazi Germany. Damn! And we have known since 2017 that they are indirectly funded by the Alliance for Global Justice, which is listed as an organizer and fiscal sponsor for Refuse Fascism, which is in turn funded by George Soros through the Tides Foundation. Refuse Fascism will be spearheading the left's self-described siege of the White House on September 5th, with a nationwide protest claiming, just as the German people could not have stopped their genocidal fascist program without driving out Hitler and the Nazi regime. We must act with all our resolve to drive this regime, a 21st century fascist regime led by a demented bully with his finger on the nuclear trigger out of power. Trump and Pence are operating out of Hitler's playbook, only they have nuclear weapons. Following Refuse Fascism's initial pressure on Pennsylvania Avenue in the beginning of September will be the proposed September 17th 50-day occupation of the White House. Coordinated by Adbusters, the same people that organized Occupy Wall Street nine years ago, let us once again summon the sweet revolutionary nonviolence that was our calling card in Zuccotti Park. In the current atmosphere of violent destruction where homicide rates are skyrocketing, does anybody really think that is a possibility. While the facade of protests cover for a growing wave of organized crime, as even far-left failure Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot just impotently pointed out, telling Time Magazine, when people showed up on Michigan Avenue in the downtown area with U-Haul trucks and cargo vans and sophisticated equipment used to cut metal and the methods that were used and how quickly it got spun up, that wasn't any spontaneous reaction. The core of what happened, that's organized criminal activity. It was a planned attack. Adbusters also learned from Occupy Wall Street that funding a sustained occupation requires more than donations from the public. We see Hollywood celebrities mindlessly step up to support communist insurgency, as they did for the murderers and rapists they bailed out of jail recently with the Minnesota Freedom Fund. And speaking of Minnesota Freedom Fund supporters, vice presidential candidate Kamala Harris, who was immediately endorsed by Alexander Soros, is poised to ride the wave of siege anarchism disguised as anti-racism and anti-police brutality. This siege will emerge as a sustained attack on a segment of the American people. It is glaringly apparent that many who support the president administration are either racist, steeped in racist religious beliefs, ignorant, or as my mother used to say, just plain dumb. This time, they, not you, have an ally in the White House. This time, they, have an ally. They're a small percentage of the American people, virulent people, some of them the dregs of society. I brought up the subject of what's going to happen after we take over the government. Uh, you know, we, we become responsible then for administrating, you know, 250 million people. And there was no answers. The only thing that I could get was that they expected that the Cubans and the North Vietnamese and the Chinese and the Russians would all want to occupy different portions of the United States. They also believed that their immediate responsibility would be to protect against what they called the counter-revolution. 
and uh, they felt that this counter-revolution could best be guarded against by creating and establishing re-education centers in the Southwest, uh, where we would take all the people who needed to be re-educated into the new way of thinking and teach them how things were going to be. I ask, well, what is going to happen to those people that we can't re-educate, that are die-hard cap capitalists? And the reply was that they'd have to be eliminated. And when I pursued this further, they estimated that they would have to eliminate 25 million people in these re-education centers. And when I say eliminate, I mean kill 25 million people. The siege expanding an already perilous tone for the future of a morally decaying republic.